Let's welcome in our NFL insider, Jonathan Jones here. JJ, what can you tell us about the deal and how do you like it? Well, this was sort of uh, obvious after the Saints did not win the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes, where you look at sort of the barren quarterback landscape out there. Uh, you look at the draft and you say, all right, do we want to just do this dance with a guy that we know? And that's what the New Orleans Saints ultimately decided. Not a ton of cap room. We know about their cap magic over the past couple of years, how they continue to restructure and kick the can down the road. And so they get a nice veteran bridge quarterback, a guy who is familiar with their personnel, uh, a guy with whom their personnel is familiar as well in Jameis Winston, who we all remember, of course, the 30 touchdowns, 30 interceptions that he threw with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He goes to New Orleans, back up for one year, comes out and wins the starting job uh, last preseason over Taysom Hill and got off to a torrid start right through those first six games and then gets injured with that ACL in the seventh game. That winds up being a victory against Tampa that Trevor Simeon ultimately led them to. But Jameis Winston gets credit for it. So 5-2 and two as a starter for Jameis Winston last season with the New Orleans Saints. Uh, ultimately, this deal, uh, without knowing the particulars of the contract, just simply that he's coming back to New Orleans makes a lot of sense for Jameis, who it was going to be difficult for him to latch on somewhere for any amount of decent money. And for, of course, the Saints, who put all their uh, chips to the middle of the table for Deshaun Watson. And then once he went to Cleveland, the Saints realized, okay, well, we can still always re-sign Jameis Winston, and now we're seeing those dominoes fall. So what is next then for the Saints this offseason? What's the next move we could see? Well, they're going to have to figure out what they're going to do to replace Teron Armstead in the very likely event that he winds up signing with the Miami Dolphins. Of course, the Chicago Bears are still involved in that. Uh, I suppose they could re-sign him, but that seems extremely unlikely at this point. Uh, they're going to want to sign a couple of wide receivers or at least draft a couple of wide receivers to go along with uh, Michael Thomas. Alvin Kamara is going to be there for the majority of the NFL season. Is he going to play in week one or week two? Uh, you know, I think that right now you have to uh, assume that there's going to be an NFL suspension that will take him out of at least one or two games there to start the year. And that was really a fantastic safety valve for Jameis Winston. One of the reasons that he was a much more efficient quarterback was uh, when you go back to his Tampa days, he was slinging the football down the field. He was not taking the checkdowns or the layups. And Alvin Kamara and Sean Payton's system allowed him to do that. Uh, you know, fewer attempted air yards. And he focused on running backs out of the backfield a lot more. And I think that's why we saw such a great touchdown to interception ratio for those six and a half games that he was in there starting. So uh, what's next for the Saints? Of course, figure out that left tackle situation. Uh, you're going to want to sign in the third wave of free agency a wide receiver, draft probably a wide receiver, plug a couple of holes on defense, but you really have already done that by virtue of locking them up last year, restructuring them this year, and then uh, making some signings as well in the first wave of free agency. So this is a, a well-stocked Saints team with a quality bridge quarterback again in Jameis Winston. Just the big question mark uh, is will that knee be fully healthy come the start of the season? It should. Uh, will he trust that knee? And then, of course, what will this offense look like in the post-Sean Payton era? So we lined up all these quarterback dominoes. They're falling very nicely. Uh, every time we come on here and we talk to you about a quarterback, we have to ask you, though, what could be next? So, J.J., the next time we talk to you about a quarterback, what could be that next domino to fall? I guess that we could see a Jimmy Garoppolo trade at some point. We're starting to run out of places, uh, right? I mean, it looks like Carolina is um, happy with – well maybe not happy or content, but relegated to drafting a quarterback in this year's draft already with Sam Darnold in that fifth-year option. Uh, you look elsewhere, the Texans are saying they're happy with Davis Mills. We'll see. The Seattle Seahawks, just as part of that Russell Wilson trade, got Drew Locke. Uh, I don't see Jimmy Garoppolo going <laughs> to an NFC West competitor. Baker Mayfield, again, no one's calling the Cleveland Browns on Baker Mayfield uh, with any sort of serious or legitimate offer. Uh, it does not suit or serve the Browns to uh, cut him right now or take the lowest possible offer just because there may eventually be an offer on the table later this week. So, um, yeah, right now, everything that we have expected to happen 
has happened, but I would anticipate a Jimmy Garoppolo trade at some point before the draft just because that's what makes the most sense for the Niners. All right, so we'll keep an eye on Jimmy G next. Uh, the Browns not getting a lot of calls for Baker Mayfield. Jonathan Jones, we appreciate it. Uh, this is why you want to listen to the Pick 6 podcast because if you take a day off, and I'm even talking just like maybe a couple hours, you're going to miss something big that has gone down in the NFL. Make sure to download and follow. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.